what you doing, girl? I thought you wasn't here. No. Who is it? close the door. They look like it was, Baby J still looks like she's sick, but Journey looks like she was perfect. <laughs> so I'm here. Hey, man. Let me pray for you. The sickness went by quick. Thank you, G. He quick healed him. Oh, yeah, he healed him quick. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. All right. Revelations chapter 2. Let's we'll start at verse 18. And to and unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, right these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and thy charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants from fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, in great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, um, basically talking about the doctrine that she's seducing them to, which have not known the depths of Satan, and they speak, I will put upon her none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a powder shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive them my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him what? Hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Amen. All right. Uh, I don't know how everybody else has been feeling, but I feel like this uh, teaching over the last few weeks, or started teaching on it, just seemed to whew, like just open up some things. Amen. Open up our eyes. Uh, nothing else making of us making us aware of of that spirit of how it has crept in even to the church. The spirit is definitely of the world. Um, I think I already mentioned uh, the three three of the three main principalities, if you will, Babylon, um, Ahab, and Jezebel. In Babylon, that spirit works within the government, works with the governmental spirit, but it also works in conjunction with Jezebel. Okay. Um, at the end is death, murder, and moral and moral moral decay, if you will. Um, and that Ahab was what we kind of, even though we kind of been touching on the Jezebel and talking about it, really we've been really trying to focus a little bit more on Ahab and how even it kind of goes along with this particular passage when it said you suffer or you had tolerated um, that spirit, Jezebel, which means you have allowed it, you've allowed that thing to, to go forth. Jezebel gets strength, it gains power, gains strength, from Ahab, okay, for not not standing up, not speaking out, not being bold, and and keeping to hold to the fast for the things of God. When you looked at King Ahab, and I would even challenge you, and I say challenge or you know try to encourage you to go back from First Kings chapter 18 where we was at, kind of read before that, even even the kings that came before Ahab. When you even look at King Solomon, he did. A whole lot of crazy things. Here you have the most wisest man, um, had just the wisdom of God. There was no other wiser man, definitely up until that time, Scripture said. Um, I mean, just so much wisdom and knowledge. Even, um, uh, what is it? Is it Proverbs chapter, 
what is that, six or seven? Let's go to here for a minute. Seven. Uh, let us read. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinswoman. That they may keep thee uh -huh, from the strange woman. From the stranger which flattered the words. Uh -huh, read. Where at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, uh -huh. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, uh -huh. passing through the streets near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Mm -hmm. In the twilight, in the evening, in the dark, in the dark night. In the and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, uh -huh. and so of her. She is loud, stubborn. Mm -hmm. Her feet abide not in her house. Mm -hmm. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Uh -huh. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an imputed face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This mm -hmm. day I have paid my vows. Mm -hmm. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, mm -hmm. diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and hard works with the fine linen of Egypt. Mm -hmm. I have perfumed my bed with herb, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us. Oh, she's talking, boy. She's, well, she's working, you know. Okay, let's just say that she, she's working. I mean, she said, I got, I, got, I got everything ready for you. I got the rose petals out and everything. Just come on in here, boy. She's talking good. All right, okay. Come, verse 18. Let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let's, ooh, let us sell us. Ourselves with love. What's solace mean? What's that masalas? Caress. Yeah, allure. Yeah, caress. What's the new living say in that verse right there? Verse 18. It says, come, let, let's drink our fill of love until morning. Let's enjoy each other's caresses. Ooh, that sound good. Ooh, that sound good. Just, just do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just speaking now. Just speaking good time. I mean, I mean, that's. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking our feel of love. Right. We, we just doing this in the We doing it in the name of love. Let's come on now. For the good man, verse 19. He's what. He's not at home. He is gone a long journey. Now, now, not only, you know, now it's like, oh, you're not even by yourself. You had a man. And you said, you called him a, a good man. The good man is not here. He's, he's gone away on business. He's on a business trip. He, he's way over in the West Coast. <laughs> and and, and, and he's he, he, he taking his bag of money every day. I mean, he's going to be gone for a little bit. For a month, huh? He's going to be gone a month. Yeah, amen. Okay, he said a month, huh? <laughs> That's what the New Living said? It says he will, he will not return until later this month. Oh, okay. Well, he kind of just added a little bit, okay? <laughs> See how somebody else interpreted that? They just added a little bit like he's going to be later on this month. Yeah, so uh, verse 21. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With, with the, the flattering, flattering her lips, she forced him. Uh -huh. He goeth after her straightway, uh -huh. and the ox goeth to the slaughter. Mm. Or as the fool to the correction of the stock, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasten to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Uh -huh. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Yes. Go not astray in her paths, for 
for she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Woo! My goodness. I mean, this is the preacher, boy, the preacher of wisdom. That's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, you can really dissect just that whole chapter if you want. Um, how he said that strange woman, you know, a, a foreigner, if you will. But she set the whole thing up. I mean, she said, I've been watching you on my casement. I've been watching you pass by. Mm -hmm. You know, like I just, oh my goodness. You got to be careful with flattery. Flattery deceives you. Mm -hmm. Actually, flattery is deception. You know, it's really false, false, saying false things about you. Um, you know, you got to be careful. You know, there's a... It can be a difference even between flattery, and flattery, I guess if you will, and flirting. But it's pretty close. <laughs> but here you have the man of God who had all the wisdom. Yet, before you, when you read about Solomon, I read that because I just thought it was powerful. When you begin to hear, it's like sometimes you can have an understanding, you can have the wisdom of God, and yet allow other spirits to deceive you. You can have the things of God and give access to other voices to take you away from the things of God. Solomon did begin to do horrible things in, in the eyesight of God. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's a lot of women. That is a whole lot. What did you say? <laughs> what you say, girl? A lot of headaches. You said, yeah, it's a lot. You said it's a lot of headaches. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But he's the king. So, I mean, in one sense, you know, I don't know how much headache it was, you know, because whatever he said pretty much go. But it was a headache because it really began to lead him astray. And, and he began to love in the name of love. You can love the wrong thing. And, and see, so again, uh, we'll be in this day where we have tolerated Jezebel. We have allowed that spirit, it said, to, to, to seduce and to teach my servants, my people, to cause them to go into sexual immorality and immorality as a whole. Sometimes we just look at it as just sexual, and it's not just all sexual, but immoral things at all. And, and so the, the spirit of this day, it's a confusing thing. It begins to make you feel like, well, I'm just doing this in the name of love. I'm doing it in the name of love. Yeah, but in the name of love, your love can be wrong. You may love it, but it can be the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Just saying that I love this doesn't make it right. If it doesn't line up with God's word, then you need to push that thing aside and say, I need to develop a hate for this or a righteous indignation against this. Otherwise, that thing will take you just like this woman was watching. And so when you think about it from a spiritual standpoint, oftentimes the spirit is, is watching from the casement. It's just it's sitting there watching us day by day as we go by. And it's just, it's just watching. It's just waiting for that moment that it can begin to talk to us and we listen. When we begin to give ear to it. Uh, Jesus says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So he, he, wants, he wants your ear, but so does Satan. Mm -hmm. see, see, God wants our ear, but Satan wants the same thing God wants. Because Satan understands if I can get their ear, then that means they'll start hearing my voice. And, and then we, if we start listening to his voice too much, then we'll have a hard time discerning between Satan yes, right. and God. Come on. Been there, done that. Amen. I, have, Amen. I have given my ear mm -hmm. to the wrong voice, Amen. and I understand the scripture said, my sheep no. know my voice, and another they will not follow. Mm -hmm. A stranger they will not follow. And in, in one sense, that is very, very true. Amen? But in the other sense, oftentimes you begin to follow who you give your ear to. 
I wish I can say I have only fathered the Lord 24-7. Mm -hmm. But I will be standing here false. Because I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. And the only way I have sinned is I mean I listen to the wrong voice. Amen. Whether that was the enemy or whether that was my own mind. Amen. Because guess what? I got a mind too. Amen. And sometimes my mind will do some crazy stuff without Satan's help. Amen. Okay, that's just my mind. And, and, cause, and so when you start thinking about my voice, then Satan's voice, and then I got God over here too. Man, that's a whole lot of voices because but what happens is we begin to practice listening to the wrong voice, and when you practice so long, you yield to it. Here you had Solomon with all his wisdom that God has given him, yet he allowed those strange women, a thousand women, that's just a lot of women. One is enough. Amen. The problem wasn't the fact that it was just the women. It was the biggest thing was the fact that they turned his heart from the things of God. Mm -hmm. He didn't follow in his father's footsteps. There's so much you're going to begin to learn about Solomon. I don't even want to read all of it, but when he started out, he started out okay. He started out good. He started out well because God began to come to him and says, uh, basically someone like, what do you want? And he says, I, I want a hearing heart. That's a translation. Basically says, give me the wisdom to be able to judge between your people. To be able to basically discern because it's a great people and I can't do it without you. That's powerful. When you, when you read uh, Hebrew and, 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 and do the word study, he's basically saying, give me a hearing heart because I want to be able to hear you had so much wisdom that they, they couldn't believe it. He, because of the wisdom of God, because of his heart, and the Lord said, because you asked for basically that type of heart, and because you asked and you didn't ask for the riches, you didn't ask for the fame or the glory, because you asked what you asked, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you everything that you need and, with, and more. I'm going to give you the riches. I'm going to give you this. I'm gonna give. He said, because you ask for the right thing. So there, there are some things that we ask right. God said, I'm going to take care of all the rest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we, we ask in the wrong heart. Or we ask in vain. Yes. Solomon wasn't asking in vain. He really, really wanted to please the Lord. But along the way, he also loved women. And loving women got him in trouble. Because loving women begin to yield to that spirit of Jezebel. The same spirit. It began to lead him astray. In so much that he began to also erect temples, erect idols for those women. So they can worship their false gods. I love you that much. I'm ready to do something wrong with you. Or even for you. There ain't enough, I love my wife. But there ain't enough loving in the world. It, there is. Now she might she might be able to get some French fries out of me when she don't need them. We might you know we might I might give in and get that dessert for her, but that's because I, I wanted to. But she could never ask. She could ask me to do some sin, and she know I'm gonna look at her like she's crazy. I love her. But you just lost your mind. That ain't nothing but the glory of God. Amen. Guess what? I got to make the choice, though. Amen. You know, I, I, I got to make the choice. Not, not to yield to that sin. I can't love my wife so much that even my wife can pull me away from the things of God. Amen. If she can pull me away from God, then that means that spirit has now seduced me to immorality and idolatry. Because now she's my idol. Amen. She has called now she become my idol and she's also allowed me, or I went and been seduced into immorality. Immorality meaning the, the things that are not moral, the things that are not God, godly, the things that are not holy. And I allowed that thing because of my love for her. 
I do love her, but do I love her that much to where I'm willing to do something contrary to the word of God? And so that's what we, we begin to begin to think, okay, I mean, this thing, it's a battle going back and forth. Uh, it's, it's the spirit of the world versus the kingdom of God. If you've been born again, you are in the kingdom of God. Amen. The kingdom of God's principles and standards are totally different than the kingdom of this world. I can't live by the kingdom of this world and live by the kingdom of God at the same time. It just doesn't mix. Oil and water don't mix. Amen. It'll separate every time. Uh, I, I'm, I wish I had some oil and stuff now. I would do a demonstration. Uh, and somebody go give me a clear, give me a clear, uh, Give me one of those clear things up there in the kitchen. Uh, Brother Frank, can we use some of your holy oil here? You can give me some more. Or something. But it's just coming to my mind now. I'll do it as it's coming to my mind. How many, uh, did everybody get a chance to watch that, that video that I asked you to watch? Some of us was here. Um, Robin Morris. Amen. Amen. Did, did we watch that? Amen. If we have not watched it, please go watch that. Um, I think I asked y'all to put it on the sisters group meeting. Did y'all put it on the sisters group meeting? Yeah. Okay, I know I put it on the brothers group. If you have not taken time to watch that, please watch that. It goes right along with everything we've been teaching. And he, he says, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, go give me a spoon or something, too. Give me a big spoon. Yeah. Run, no, run, because you move us slow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll just pour that in there like that. How about that? What's that? Hmm? That paper that's sitting on. What kind of block is it? Oh, what kind of block is it? Do you want that? Amen. Uh, Sister Cheryl, will you grab 1 Corinthians 2 and 12? Sister Janet, will you grab Ephesians 6 and 12? Uh, Sister Kim, will you grab Romans 12 and 2? Brother Reggie, will you grab 1 John 2 and 15? First Corinthians 2 and 12, Janet, Ephesians 6 and 12, Kim, Romans 12 and 2. And 1 John 2 and 15, Brother Rich. Oh, man, that is good. Man, that is so strong. So, we got the oil of the Holy Ghost right here. They said the olive oil represents just a, it's a manifestation and a tangible evidence of His Spirit. So oftentimes, you know, when we use it, you know, it's representing in His Spirit coming upon you, we're just anointing you. Uh, many times throughout the scripture, they took anointing oil and sanctified and consecrated the things of God. Okay? So it was, it was very important um, that oil was very important. And there was other oil that was specifically just for the priest. You didn't use that just in any other area. You used it specifically of the anointing for the priesthood. Okay. But when you when you when you think about it from this standpoint, you got the oil at the top, you got all the things of the world below. You got two different kingdoms in this picture. They should always be separated. Because oil and water don't mix. Many times what we do is try to mix it. And as long as you stir within the world, you mixing your spirit within it. Because you got your hand in something you have no business. As long as you keep your hand in it, you're going to stay within the world. And you mixing God's kingdom and the world's kingdom. And he said it shouldn't be like that. Because there's no separation. But when you really just decide to let God do his thing, the spirit begins to separate itself. That's right, man. And rise above. And rise above. <laughs> it separates itself. Mm -hmm. All that ungodly stuff 
should be tucked down, not in the sense of a place of being so it can be brought back up, right, right. but a total separation that you can't have access to. His spirit, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of this world cannot mix. If they do, it's an abomination. It, it, it causes thank you. It, it causes the wrong mixture. He's never ever wanted his oil to mix with the world. Yeah. He said, "You got to begin to keep a separation." Uh, we read that scripture, uh, Cheryl. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. Not the world's spirit, uh huh. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Amen. Six and twelve, Ephesians. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, against power, against the ruler of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness oh. in high places. Okay, amen. Amen. So we we not fight against flesh and blood, but against rulers of darkness of what? This world, Romans. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh -huh. that you may prove what is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So be, be not conformed to this world. Again, we got the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. And there is a God of this world. Mm -hmm. God, he's, yeah, just ruler over everything, but he's not the God of this world. There is a prince that has dominion in this world. Okay. But we also, through Jesus Christ, have now been regained domain or dominion back over that. So now that we can take full rights to what always God has given us. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure we keep the two separate. Amen. Go ahead, First John. Uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Uh -huh. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Woo, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is that. But you, but you want to get messed up on some love? You read First John. John will mess you up. I mean, he'll, he'll tell you because he make you start feeling like, okay, so I mean, are you saying like we? It's one thing being in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Being in the, he wants us in the world, but he don't wants us of the world. We have to be in the world so we can make an impact. We have to be in the world because he really wants his heaven here on this earth. Yeah. That only happens now through the church. It was supposed to happen through Adam, but he messed that up through sin. Sin always causes a separation from God. But now through Christ Jesus, we've gained that back to have full dominion to where he always wanted. So we are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. We are the light of the world. Yeah. If you're in Christ... That means we don't have to be subject to any Jezebel spirit or any other spirit. Amen. That's not the only spirit. That's just one. There's many other, but it is a high-ranking spirit. Yeah. It is a principality. But I don't have to allow. And, and principality often rules regions. But in, but that spirit itself can uh, uh, influence influence us individually. But I don't have to subject be subjected to that. Why? Because I am not of this world. I'm in it, but I'm not of this world. Why well, ain't you of this world? Because I've been born again. Amen. I'm in Jesus Christ. And since I'm in Jesus Christ, I'm in the kingdom of God. And since I'm in the kingdom of God, i got different standards to live by. i got different operations to move by. Why? Because the things I used to do here, I, I can't do that same thing over here. Well, 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 why not? It, it, does, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't mix. It only makes when I'm messing with it. But if I just leave it alone and let it do what it's supposed to do, the spirit of stay separate from it. If we begin to allow God's spirit to really speak to us, it'll just stay in its place. But we're putting our hand in it. Rather than just hearing from the voice of God. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. There is a God of this world. Uh, John 12, 30, 31, Jesus answered and said, 
This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. And now shall the prince of this world be cast out. See, Satan had gained dominion of this through sin. And now he became the God of this world, which means he's also the God of this world system. So in order to break myself from this system, I have to be a part of a new system. And the only way I can be a part of a new system is to be part of the kingdom of God. And if I can be able to access things through Christ. I can't access it on my own. I can only access it through Christ by faith. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's see. 1 John 4. If you can pull that up. 1 John, everybody. 1 John 4, 1 through 6. Hallelujah. That's a pretty good demonstration with the oil there. Mm -hmm. Kind of bringing it home to me a little bit. That's right. First John 4, 1 through 6. Beloved, believe what? Not, Not every, every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God. Uh -huh. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Mm -hmm. Hereby know ye the, the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Yes. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Uh huh. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Christ. Where he you have heard, heard that, that it shall come. come. And even he now. Already. So this is already. He wrote this, but he said it's already here. It's already so guess what? That spirit has, has, has left. It's still here. Okay, verse four. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. And so he's, he's, he's educating them, giving them understanding about the spirit. But he also said, but you you overcoming this thing. Why? Because greater is He that's in you. You you've overcome it. You don't have to be subjected to this thing. Verse five. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Uh-huh. We are of God, he knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of the world versus the spirit of God, you got to test the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God or not. You know, how, how, do, how do we do that? There's just a couple things. That I'm looking for. How, how, how do we really test the spirit to see whether it's of God? Huh? Well, it says that um, the one that confesses that Jesus died and that God raised him from the dead. Oh, good. Amen. Amen. That's true. I, I got a question about that. Yes. Uh, it might be off topic, but uh, like in another Bible verse, it says um, everybody that says Lord, Lord, Lord is, is, is not, you know. I mm -hmm. can't remember how it actually goes. Um, he said, many shall come in that day. Many shall come in that day. And, um, he said, you know what I'm saying? Lord, we prophesied in their yeah. name. We did this in your name. We did this in your name. Yeah, and he's going to say, I just had to depart from you. I'm pretty sure they confessed it too. So. You said that what? I'm pretty sure they confessed that the Lord was Lord too. So how does, how does that You work? said they did confess he was they Lord and Lord? Too, but they was doing all that. Because they was used his name? Yeah. They didn't know him. They just used his name. They was foraging. They use his name without authority or permission. Mm -hmm. Just because you believe it don't mean you have permission to use it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. You can know I got a million dollars in the bank, but that ain't give you permission to write a check with my name. Mm -hmm. sure enough. You know about me. You know quite a bit of things about me. Matter of fact, you even researched me, but you got a hold of my checkbook. You said, didn't I give to the poor? Didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do this in your name? I did many great things using your money for the kingdom of God, but you used without my permission. You didn't know me like that. You had no authority to use my name. You knew of me and about me, but don't have a relationship with me. Those people don't have a relationship. They never truly confessed him as Christ from that standpoint of salvation and repentance unto him. They just knew of him. And your son might have an accident. Huh? Now your son might have that access, right? Yeah, my, my son don't have that access unless I give him the access. Right, exactly. 
Are you talking about Vincent Jr.? No, I'm saying. Oh, you just saying. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But your son, yeah. and from that standpoint, yeah. can have that access right. because I gave permission. He's in relationship with me. Right. But there are times, because I use my son, I use my natural son, Vincent, because we have the same name. Only thing that separates us is age and the SR versus the G JR. You know, there have been times he have called me, so I'm getting ready to run the sprint because we have you know, on a on family plan. I need to go in the sprint, and I said, man, just run the sprint, man, just do what you go. You got my pass code. They are none the wiser because he goes, my name is Vincent Nash, and I can show you, boom. But the biggest thing, but that he had authority and permission. He also has my name, which is powerful because guess what? We have his name because we have his blood. And since we have his blood, we have his name, we have access. We just have to know it. And since we, we then, therefore, then we can go on behalf of him because we have authority and we have his name because we have his blood. Those men or people, that scenario, they didn't have his blood. Mm -hmm. They just knew his name. Mm -hmm. Knowing the name without the blood don't make you have authority. Mm -hmm. And doesn't give you permission. You can only move because of the blood that flows through your vein. And that blood should be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. That's what gives you access because now you're born again. And he said, and everything that is Christ is mine because now you're joint heirs with Christ. Whatever is in his account is in my account. I can only get it if I access it through faith. Some things I don't access because I don't believe it yet. But he's helping me. Feel God right there. Some things I'm missing out on because my faith is still here. And I need to him unlock that part. Yes, I want that part of my faith to be unlocked. Yes. Because there are things that I have access to. Right. And I know I do. Yes. But there's still a blockage. Because I understand that I can get it if I know it and believe it yes. and have faith in it. Yes. If we're not seeing certain things, it's not because it's not because we're not born again. Sometimes we just haven't accessed it through faith. So that means I have to get in his word. Faith come by hearing, come on, hearing of the word. Sometimes I have to get down in prayer. Those were really the two things I was kind of looking for. You know, if you want to really test the spirit and try the spirit, you have to test it by his word right. and through prayer. Right. Because see, through both, through his word and through prayer, you get that rhema word and that spoken word is now alive and now faith happens. Wow. See, first I just had the thought. I had the logos of God. I had the thought of God, but I didn't have the rhema of God. The rhema of God activates it in my life because now I just don't know it in my mind. I actually know it because he spoke it. Now it just unlocked it. Because I've taken the time to get in his word mm -hmm. and to hear. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we also began to test the spirit and try it. But so you ought, you ought to have that, Sister Sharice. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I was going to say something else, but I, I lost my train of thought. I'm getting, getting stuck there for a minute. That, that's, a good, that's a good question. Because the, 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 the reality is there's going to be many. It says, he said it. He said, many are going to come to me in that day. He didn't say there's going to be a few people. He said, there's going to be some. He said, there's going to be many that's going to come to me in that day. And they're going to say, Lord, we prophesied. Lord, we cast out devils. Lord, we healed. And we did this all in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me because you work iniquity. And when you research it, it's relationship-based. They did not have authority. They just knew his name, but no relationship. They did not know him. They was not born in this thing. Many people will go to church, understand the name. Some of those people will access things because of the name by faith. 
See, faith works with a believer and a non-believer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is the key that unlocks the door. But you can unlock the door without having my name placed in you. You're not born in this thing. Even though you accessed it by faith, you still don't know me. And then you 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 allow the same spirit. It could be other spirits as well. It now has seduced you into looking for a manifestation or a spiritual encounter, but no substance. You have to be careful because it'll, it'll seduce you. It'll move you over to just be so geared of looking for a manifestation. I want a spiritual encounter. I want a spiritual encounter. And, and, and Satan will bring you something. He'll give you a spiritual encounter. You want one? Oh, yeah. Hey. Glory to God. Woo. Glory. Jesus. And you may understand the power of the name, but having the power of the name and no relationship gives you no right. And therefore, you have no inheritance. And you will find yourself on the day of judgment standing there. And he will say, depart from me. He didn't even boast in what they did. That's why he told his disciples, they got excited. Whew, Lord, whew, they was happy. They came back rejoicing. He said, Lord, oh, the, the, the dead was raised. Sick was healed. Devils were cast out. Boy, we did all this stuff. He said, oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Don't, don't be excited about that. He said, yeah, yeah, rather, I want you to be joyous. That your name is written down. Because yes. <laughs> he says, I need you to be more happy about your name being written down than you casting out any demon. Because other people are casting out demons in my name without authority, but they're not born again. They're not born in this thing. They're not a child. They're not a son. Just be happy you're a child. And then we'll start with, with, with the rest of the stuff. We'll get there. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so guess what? I'm happy. I'm joyous to be a child of God. Yes. Amen. To be a son of God. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Pastor, you hit on it because flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you because that is a true fact. When you get the knowledge of that word, of that name, you can move mountains. You uh -huh. can raise the dead. And people are doing it every day and people are seeing it. And they're, and they're believing those people are saved, but they're not saved. They got the knowledge of that name. Yes. It's in that name. So Come you got to know it's in that name. Yes, it is. And it's in that name. It's in that name. It's in that name. You got to know that. It's in that name. It's in that name. It's in that name. It's in that name. Yes, it is. It's in that name. Say it's in the name. It's in the name. Hallelujah. And it's faith in the name. It's in the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, what's that scripture in Acts? Oh man, I can't even think how it goes. Uh, through his name and faith in his name. And through his name, something like that. Just love the way it says in Acts, I think, Hallelujah. chapter 4. Somewhere around there. Jesus. Uh, oh, salvation, no other name but that name. Hallelujah. The name brings power. The name brings a whole lot. But just having the name and not having the authority and the permission and the relationship does nothing. That does absolutely nothing. That, you know, uh, yeah, in, in, in some sense, you know, you can have, I, you know, there are times I could, uh, you know, just even like right there, I mean, I, I mean, I really did. I just felt that emotion a little bit just where it's like, wow, there's, there's things that I need to access. That I need access to. And it's really there. It's like, Lord, man, I need to, what, what is that, what's going on in here and here? Why is that block? Why am I blocked? What is blocking my faith? What is allowing me to, you know, just only understand it here, but not here. You understand what I'm saying? And so, because I know it works. It, it's worked every time. Yes, sir. I, I'm good. To, I, I, it works every time. But so, and then you might have somebody, let's say, they're not even a child of God, even according to the scripture that you mentioned, yet they know the name. And you can look at them and say, well, man, they don't even have the relationship I do. And they're doing, they seem to be doing more than what I'm doing with the power and the authority. Well, how are they doing what they do and they're not even a child? Come on. Because they understand what they, they understand the name. They seem to understand the name in a way I don't even understand. But then Christ also reassures, he's like, okay, but that ain't even the great thing. The great thing is your name is written. Come on, come on. So sometimes we have to reverse our thinking because we, we almost are so caught up 
and, and the miraculous will happen. There will be things that will happen, but sometimes we're so focused on waiting for the miraculous that we just need to be joyous that my name is written down. Amen. If you don't, if you're not for sure your name is written, you need to know that you know that you know. That's Come on. it. That's it. If you doubt in one day to the next whether you really say, then, then I would suggest to you that you get down on your knees or you sit down in a chair, you take some time somewhere and begin to call out on God like you've never called out on him before. And so, Lord, I need you in my life. I want you in my life. I need your spirit flowing through me, in me, out of me. I need to know for a fact. Hallelujah. I don't want to be vacillating up and down, ebbing and flowing every day. Yeah. One day I'm saying, the next day I don't know what's happening. Yeah. No, I need to know. Yeah. 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 If I don't ever see a demon cast out, I need to know I'm going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's it. Yes, Lord. If I'm not a day, am I sure? If I'm not sure, then I must be crying out to God. I, I mean, really, this thing is real. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Well, I ain't for sure, but why not? How important to it is you? Come on. I messed that up. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. The devil is a lie. No? <laughs> so how important is it to you? <laughs> Come on, Brother Joe. Um, I was just thinking, like, as you were saying that, how they, they deceive themselves in so much. Mm -hmm. And that's scary because... That's all this I'm, to me. That's all, to kind of like a reprobate mind. Uh -huh. you, know, you believe it was was uh, good, evil, good, and vice versa, right? So, uh -huh. you really, like you said, you really you start touching on it before I can say it, but you you really got to know that you know because they thought they was cool. You think that you're cool, and you go and you die, and you, he's like, depart from me. You like, but I did all these different things. So you really got to make sure that your your salvation is intact. Yeah. That's so important because you can de deceive yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Well, Paul says it like this. When you say that, you made me think about this. In First Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians, chapter eleven, um, verse thirteen and fourteen. Um, it says, for such as false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. He said, deceitful workers transforming themselves. Them, they tra See, some of us want to transform ourselves. When you transform yourself, you're going to be false. Mm -hmm. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's no great thing if his ministers also, if his ministers, talking about Satan, be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So that you can try to transform yourself if you want, but anybody who transforms themselves, their works will come to destruction. All you're doing is being uh, considered an angel of light by Satan. Yes, sir. Uh, does that apply to like people who are like self-proclaimed bishops, prophets? It could, absolutely could. Yes, ma'am. It just made me think about not only are we like trying to transform ourselves, but even through the midst of God transforming us, we come out of the fire too soon because we, we think we're there. Right. So I'm thinking about a, a cake even baking and how we see it rising is there. Come on. That cake out because we think it's done. Mm -hmm. Cut into it, one storm, one cut, one flat, you just fall apart and fuck. <laughs> you you came out a little bit too come soon. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. Uh, you also made me think what the, what the scripture says. I mean, can the. Clay saying to the potter, make me thus. He said, does not the potter have power over the clay to make it what he wants? I mean, how are you going to tell me how to make my teacup? Oh, wow. I mean, I think you ought to make yours a little bigger. Like, this, is my, this is my baby. This is my teacup. This is my pottery. You make yours, let me make mine. I got power over my clay. You have power over your clay. But he, he has power over all his clay. Oh, we, we just, all of us is just clay. And he also said, I'll make some vessels of honor, some gold and silver, and some of dishonor. He said, I'll show mercy who will want to show mercy. And I will bring fire and judgment. I will bring fire and judgment. That's why it ain't nothing but the goodness and grace of God. If he make you silver or gold and not something that can just burn up. If he can put fire on you and you not burn up, that means you a 
Jesus. 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 That means you are a precious metal, you are a yes. precious jewel. Hallelujah. If fire can burn you and you not burn up, that means you're a good work. Because some people are getting fire and they're burning up. That means they was just staying and humble yes. and stumbled anyway. They was going to hell. Jesus. Ooh. But if he can put fire on you and you not burn up, that means you're precious in the sight of God. He said, I got a great work for you to do. He said, and you're just complaining and bickering and arguing. I got something for you to do. Hallelujah to God. He said, you don't have to succumb to any spirit. I'm just trying to put the fire on you so you can clean and clear. I want you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to just give him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for his grace. Thank you for his mercy. Thank you for this loveliness, Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank you for favor today. We thank you for just being mindful of us, Lord. Hallelujah. All oh, your grace, hallelujah, is just too much. Too much for me, Lord. I don't even understand it. I don't even, hallelujah, even figure it out. How messy I've been. But you just still been gracious and merciful unto me. Hallelujah. I should be dead. I should be cut off. But you still keep on blessing me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for calling me out of darkness into this marvelous light, hallelujah, placing upon me, hallelujah, hey, glory to God, hallelujah, hey, thank you, Jesus, we don't have to be subject to any other spirit but the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, help me, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, hallelujah, help me, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me discernment, Lord. Help me to only hear your voice, Lord. Hallelujah. Too many voices in the world. Hallelujah. Uh, too many distractions, oh God. Hallelujah. Help us to do our first work over again. Hallelujah. Turn us back, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Don't remove the candlestick, oh God. Hallelujah. Don't remove it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Pick up. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, hey, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that's what the message was on Sunday. Just talking about falling in love with him all over again. Sister Janet did a very good job. And Lord just used her and just doing our first works over again. He said, if you don't come back to me, he said, I'll remove the candlestick. He said, I'll remove the light if you don't turn back. But I'm giving you a place and a chance to come back to me. We need to fall all over in love with him again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, forgive me for complaining. Lord God, hallelujah. Forgive me, Lord, for just having the wrong attitude, the wrong mindset. Oh, God, right now, please, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, forgive me, Jesus. It was just your fire that was purifying me. Hallelujah. And I thought you was trying to bring, hallelujah, judgment or correction or discipline. And you was just trying to get those things out of me that I didn't need. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. We are precious in your sight. Hallelujah. Oh, you have a great work for us to do. Hallelujah. Mm. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. I, just, I just feel that right there. Hallelujah. I just feel that right there. Hallelujah. Ooh. Ah, God. That's so strong. So strong. We trying to come out of the oven too early. He's just putting the fire on us because we're precious. Guess what? I haven't burned up yet. I've had some fire in my life. I feel like, boy, I can't take no more. I feel like this is sometimes too much. This is, I feel like the fire is hot. But guess what? I'm still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got more worth than I even realized. Hallelujah. Guess what? You got more worth than you realize. If the fire's turned up, thinking for it. Oh, I don't like it 
no, no chastisement in the present seem to be joyous, but in the end it yields a peaceable fruit. Lord, I just thank you for it. Oh, I don't like it right now. I mean, it's kind of hot. I don't know how much hotter I can get, but if you see something else that needs to come out, then so be it. When you see me, I want you to be able to see yourself. Yeah. And that they say when gold is real pure, you should be able to look at it and see a reflection. That means when he purifies you, when that fire, that fire ought to be so, who those things should be coming out of us so much. And when he skims it all and it's pure, he should be able to see his reflection in you. Mm. He's just looking at his self-image. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. He said, boy, when I see Keith, I see me. When I see Andre, I see me. When I see Kim, I see me. Kathy, when I look at her, I see me. I don't even see them. All I see is me. Yes. Hallelujah. Whoo, hallelujah. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Help us, Lord. Ah, oh, God, give us an ear to hear. Help us, Lord, in our prayer time, Lord. Help us just to even pray more, Lord. Stir that hunger up to talk to you. Help us to hear you when you speak. Give us a rhema word, Lord God, that builds our faith. Hallelujah, we're not of this world. We're part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, allow your spirit to flow in and out of us. Lord, what you say, I want to say. Hallelujah. I want my words to be your words. I want my actions to be yours. Lord, you say your thoughts are not my thoughts, and your ways are much higher. Hallelujah. I just ask that you help me just line this old filthiness up and just submit it unto you. Oh, God, I just feel a cleansing, Lord. Thank you for the washing of the water of the word. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, Lord. And we just honor you and we bless you. Allow this word, Lord, just to stir somebody's heart. Lord, even somebody that's been going back and forth, whether they're saved or not saved, somebody might not be saved. Lord, we just ask that you save them in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that they begin to call upon you, Lord God, that you begin to baptize them with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Oh, that they begin to speak in tongues and the Spirit give them utterance. Oh, that their heavenly language begin to flow in and out of them, Lord God, that they begin to edify their spirit, build up their spiritual man. Help them to know that they know that they know, Lord God. Hallelujah right now. Oh, God, let it be a turning. Let it be a turning. Let it be a turning. Ah, let it be a repenting. Hallelujah. And a turning back unto you, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, revive, renew, refresh, restore. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even our loved ones, Lord, right now. The backslider today. Oh, those who that spirit have seduced and have them gone astray, Lord. We just pray them back, Lord, right now. We just, oh, we just call them to come back. Just come back, come back. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Allow your word just to continue to prick and to touch their heart. Don't take your hand off of them. Hallelujah. Oh, God, souls are dying and going to hell. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. And awesome, God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hey, glory. Mother Frank. Speak up a little bit, Mother. While you were praying, the Lord just dropped this down in my spirit. 